Somehow, this season so far has been a very long year. But it's also flown by. I think that games seem to last longer when the team isn't playing well. And for the entire first half, the Yankees just were not playing well. They weren't hitting. They would get guys on base from walks. They would take forever to get on base, and then they would promptly hit into a double play. And that's some of the most frustrating baseball to watch. We've had guys go down with injuries again and with illness. We've had blown leads, but we've also had some really hot streaks. We turned a couple of triple plays. The Yankees just finished a 13-game win streak. But then, of course, they followed that up with a four-game losing streak. Uh, The Rays have lost a couple of nights in a row, so the Yankees have crept back. Imagine if you don't have that four-game losing streak. Imagine if you win two of them. All of a sudden, you're within striking distance, four and a half games. So it's been kind of a frustrating year for Yankees fans, at least for this one. It's rare that I actually do a Yankees game day episode and an episode of The Freeze in the same day. But as we get towards the end of the season and we approach the playoffs and we match up against the Rays and the Red Sox and the Blue Jays and we have a lot of games at home, there's going to be more interest in the Yankees. So I'm planning to step up my content game over the next month. I'll tell you what, it's going to be an exciting postseason if the Yankees can make a run. I think they'll probably win the wild card game against whomever they're playing against, though Chris Sale is an X factor because he's still really good. His velocity didn't seem to me like it was as crisp as it was before he went on the injured list. I watched him briefly, but he's still a guy who can get pumped up and shut you down. So that game is going to potentially be a pitcher's duel. You know, Garrett Cole versus Chris Sale could be a one nothing, a two to one game. It really could. And then if you get to the division series, it looks like it could be a matchup with the Rays again. It'll be interesting to see what the environment inside of Tropicana Field is like if the Yankees are playing the Rays. Tampa is where the Yankees have their spring training complex. They have a large faction of employees down there. A lot of Yankees players have houses and family and things in the Tampa area, you could see a substantial Yankees contingent of fans in Tropicana Field for a postseason game. Now, I'm sure that the Rays will figure out a way to pump up the sound of their own fans, you know, whether that's making less tickets available to, you know, New Yorkers or whatever. But I feel like the Yankees in Tampa Bay in the playoffs will be at less of a disadvantage than some other teams. I also feel like the Yankees have played the Rays pretty tough this year. They've won a few times in Tampa Bay, which doesn't always happen. Also, the Yankees will have the advantage of having just played the Rays in the final few games of the season. You know, you see these pitchers over and over again over the course of a week, advantage hitter. That's why it's really important for the Yankees to get within two games going into that final three-game series. Because if the Rays have the ability to coast through that entire three-game series and pitch guys differently and not really play to win, if they already have it in the bag, then it doesn't help the Yankees as much because they're going to see completely different shifts, completely different configurations, completely different bullpen matchups in the potential division series game. That's if you can get by the wild card round which, as we mentioned, not a given. The Rays, I don't think, have the same level of pitching that the Yankees do. They also don't have Tyler Glass now. He's on the 60-day IL. The thing that scares me about the Rays is that they have a few Yankees killers. They have Mike Zunino. He always seems to kill the Yankees. He's got 27 home runs this year already, and he's just 30 years old, so he'll probably be a Ray... For at least a few more years. you got to imagine that they'll bring him back. you got Brandon Lau. He's got 31 home runs. He kills the Yankees. you got Austin Meadows, who's on the come up. He's just 26 years old. He could break out. Randy Orozarena last year. Nobody saw him coming. Wander Franco. 
is hitting 277 now with a 798 OPS. He's just 20 years old. The Yankees have to be very careful with Wander Franco. You cannot let a 20-year-old beat you and become your nemesis for the next decade. But the Rays have lost a couple in a row. They're still in first place. They are still in the driver's seat. But this is not over. The Yankees are seven games back, and we've seen a couple of times this year the Yankees erase some big deficits. It's to their advantage that they are basically mixed up in a tight wild card race, too, because you're at risk of not making the playoffs at all if you don't play well. So the Yankees have got to keep playing well. And that, in turn, puts pressure on the Rays, who know they have to keep playing well. If there's one thing that watching baseball for over 30 years has taught me, it's that anything can happen. I never would have expected the Red Sox to come back from 3-0 in 2004. In 2000, the Yankees backed into the playoffs. They finished with 87 wins, I believe. And then they went on a run in the playoffs and won the World Series against the Mets. In 2001, now 20 years ago, they had those magical comebacks at home with Tino Martinez hitting the game-tying home run. Derek Jeter, the Mr. November home run. Scott Brocious, home run for the second night in a row with two outs in the ninth. Baseball can surprise you, and it will surprise you. Every year, baseball finds some new way to do something that's never happened before. Randy Arozarena's playoff performance last year. The White Sox in 2005, riding their rotation to death. Complete games almost every night. 2014, the Royals riding rookie Jordano Ventura and a great bullpen. The Madison Bumgardner performances from the San Francisco Giants. You can't predict baseball, Susan, as John Sterling likes to say. Oh, by the way, did you guys hear about John Sterling? So apparently the rain the other night was so heavy in the Bronx that it was trouble for drivers. You know, they say with flash floods, don't drown, turn around. And John Sterling, who's 83 years old, he's been driving a long time and driving through New York City for decades. And the rain was so bad that he got caught up in it and couldn't advance. And he said that uh, apparently Ricky Ricardo, not Lucy's husband, but the Yankees' Spanish play-by-play announcer, and Susan Waldman combined to save his life. Apparently, he called Susan Waldman, or Susan Waldman called him, and he was basically unable to advance. And Ricky went over there and, I guess, came to the rescue. And thank God, because I wouldn't be able to handle not having John Sterling for this month and these playoffs. He's been so much fun to listen to this year. When the Yankees aren't hitting, he does so much ball breaking. They can't hit. I'll tell you what, Susan, they just, they don't hit. They just don't hit. Night after night, it's the same story. They don't hit. But when they're playing well and they have big moments, nobody still calls a big moment for the Yankees like John Sterling. I do think that Ryan Rucco is the future of the Yankees broadcast booth, either on TV or the radio. He's tremendous. He's as good as it gets talent-wise. But John Sterling's voice has narrated so many big moments in Yankees history that there's nobody I'd rather listen to when the Yankees hit a walk-off home run. Nobody. I've been thinking about the Yankees roster construction a little bit more. Now that we're getting more people back, the team is becoming a little bit more right-handed. You're losing Velasquez from the lineup now that Glaber Torres is coming back. Tyler Wade will not be getting as much playing time. But the Yankees are still a fearsome lineup when everybody's swinging the bat well. John Carlo has been crushing the ball. Aaron Judge has been crushing the ball. And Luke Voigt, when he gets in the game, has been swinging the bat pretty well. I think it's odd that the Yankees have been sitting him as much as they're sitting him. It might be one of those things where they're trying to keep him healthy. I mentioned that on the episode of Yankees game day, that they're trying to keep people healthy. Luke Voigt, since coming to the Yankees, has been unable to play a long period of games, a long stretch of games. 
without having some kind of a nagging injury, whether it's a hernia or it's a foot thing or a leg thing or a psychological thing. No, sorry, that's a Major League Two reference. But for real, when, when he plays long stretches, he gets nicked up and banged up and it, it might just be because he's such a big, strong guy and he throws his weight around, he plays hard, he swings hard. I think it's just detrimental to his health. Which is why I'm not 100% sure we're going to see him back next year. I think the Yankees may move him this winter. Apparently, they tried to move him at the trade deadline and were kind of rebuffed. Like, teams were not offering very much for Luke Voigt, which I find odd. You know, he hit 20-something home runs last year, led the league. He's a good guy. He's a fun guy. He's competitive. We saw how he reacted when the Yankees got Rizzo. I think the Yankees are using this winter as a chance to reevaluate the roster you know if you can move Luke Voigt that allows you to shift DJ LeMahieu back to first base and to shift Glaber Torres over to second base and that opens up shortstop for either Anthony Volpe or less likely a free agent but if Volpe is not ready at the beginning of the season next year do you start with Peraza who's a little bit higher up in the organization right now do you start with Velasquez as a placeholder that might be why the Yankees gave him an extended look over the past month or so. Do you start with Tyler Wade at shortstop and just say, hey, Tyler, play every day, play your small ball, and you're keeping this position warm for Anthony Volpe. It's just an interesting, it's an interesting scenario. If you lose Luke Voigt and Anthony Rizzo, they're probably not going to re-sign Anthony Rizzo for big dollars, although I think he would be a nice guy to keep around because he plays such good defense. You know, maybe you go with one more year of DJ at second and Glaber at short and just hope that Glaber can turn it around and you sign Rizzo. That's that's an option. I think the Yankees are going to try and create a lot more roster flexibility this winter. We saw in August when the Yankees were playing their best, they had guys moving all over the field. They had Tyler Wade playing left field one day, playing third base the next day, Rugnet Odor moving all around. Roster flexibility is important. That's how the Rays do it. They've got a lot of guys who are interchangeable. Interchangeable, solid players who are good on defense. The Yankees have improved their defense. But next year, do you really want an entire season of Stanton in right field? Personally... I would, you know, if the Yankees keep him, I would be more likely to split him between DH and right field and, and to move Aaron Judge back and forth to center field. So I don't think you need to go out and get a center fielder. You'll probably have Aaron Hicks back, and he becomes the new Brett Gardner, the fourth outfielder who probably plays too much. There's some good free agents out there, too. Freddie Freeman's a free agent. We saw not only how well he plays on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, this guy's a great base runner. I was really impressed by how well and how aggressively he ran the bases in Atlanta. But do you want to give out a big contract to Freddie Freeman when it looks like Aaron Judge has been able to stay healthy and be a great player? The Yankees are going to have to give him a contract at some point. I don't think they're giving him $200 million. I don't think they're giving him 10 years. But if he gets five years, $125 million, I could see that happening. I could see that I could see that happening because one as a staple of the New York Yankees, you know, possibly a captain. It's okay to take a little bit less money because you're going to get endorsements out the wazoo. You're going to get set up with every company that wants to pitch something. You're going to be on every billboard. You think Derek Jeter couldn't have gotten more? He probably could have. But he stayed with the Yankees. He became the face of New York. And now he owns, basically partially owns a Major League Baseball team. He did fine financially. So I think you're going to want to pay Judge, but you're not going to have to go overboard to pay Judge. He knows that. They know that. And John Carlo and Aaron Judge trading off spots between right field and DH pretty much every day. That's... That's a really smart way to go. I think that was the original intended plan, and it could keep both of those guys healthy. And if John Carlos Stanton can now play more in the field, that's just a huge benefit to the Yankees. Center field, I mean, you will have Hicks coming back. 
Gardner has an option. I, I don't think they should bring back Gardner, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did because they seem to love Brett Gardner. And Aaron Hicks, I don't know how much you're going to get out of him. I mean, the guy's hurt every year. I think you might get a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, and then he's going to be on the injured list. I think you need to have a backup plan for center field. I don't think the Martian's going to be ready next year based on what I've seen. I think he's probably a couple of years away. You know, originally, based on the hype and based on the side work, just looking at his mechanics, looking at his exit velocities, you think, well, maybe he could be in the major leagues at 19, but he just hasn't played well enough. You got to play better. Now, next year, he might have his big minor league year, but he might not. There's a chance he could... I think he will be in the major leagues, but I think there's a chance that he advances more slowly than we thought. Which opens up center field. Do you get somebody for center field on the short term? Do you sign Starling Marte to a two-year deal for $50 million? I don't care that he's right-handed. Watching him play, that man can play baseball. So the Yankees have some choices to make. I'll see everybody after the game.